Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Today we've got the launch of a new product, ComGrow, the makers of the ComGo Z1 laser. <laughs> ComGrow, ComGo Z1 laser. Say that five times. <laughs> Has officially launched their new quad diode laser module. And it is a 20 watt module can be adapted to many different machines, either the Z1 if you own the ComGro, the ComGo, <laughs> or you can adapt it to an X-Tool, uh, a LaserMaster 2, LaserMaster 3, um, X-Tool. It adapts, it comes with adapter wires for everything, and it's going to be a quick video today, I promise. So uh, we're just going to jump right into it and get started right now. All right, so here it is. <laughs> the ComGrow 20 watt laser. Wow, they did a nice job on the retail packaging. I'll tell you that much. And let's see if we can get the box open. And see what is inside the box. Uh, really nice rubber feeling cover there and here is our owner's manual uh, this is compatible with other machines so you'll see they have the ComGrow installation here as well as the X-Tool so if you wanted to upgrade to upgrade your X-Tool machine, you could do so. And here is the module. Oh, nice. It's not a blue universe. Isn't that good to see? Uh, looks very similar to the X-Tool. Here's our focusing gauge over here, I guess. That's what that is. And there's our depth on the side there. A little bit closer so you can see that uh, pretty looking module I don't like these windows <laughs> and this one does not look like it's removable so one of those things you just have to live with um, it does have a solid air assist here let's put this on the side and we've got a couple of boxes Let's see what we got in here. Okay, so we've got an emergency stop button, uh, some tools, a screwdriver, some twist ties, an adapter plate. Let's see what we got in this one. And it looks like adapters for different lasers here. And, of course, the power brick. So, let's see what kind. It's an LYD. So, it's a name brand. That's good to see. Um, 110 to 40, 2.5 amps. Output is 24 volts, 4 amps. So a quality quality power brick. That's also nice to see. And that should be everything that's in the box. So there we go. The new ComGrow 20 watt. And they're claiming that this is for 5 watt diodes. So uh, unlike the others that are claiming for 6 watt diodes, but we'll see how it does. Let's get this installed on the Z1 and do some testing with it. All right, so here's the assembly. Very simple. Put on the bracket. Take off the old bracket. Put on the new bracket. Uh, it only took uh, just a few minutes to do this. And it was ready to go. All right, so the first thing that I did on this was the cut test. I used the same exact wood that I did on the Acer 24 watt. 
uh, it did surprisingly well uh, you'll see in a minute as I compare it now don't look at these odd looking uh, texts here you know all of this odd looking text because um, this machine was in storage for over a month and in, in hot storage I have to say and you can see at the top over here where the belt uh, had loosened up. Actually, all of the belts had loosened up. And I ran a few of the tests. You can see the curve over here. I had ran a few tests with um, these belts, you know, being loose. So that's my, my fault that, you know, there's a little extra cut line here. And the text is, is double. But I did wind up replacing those uh, belts a little further on. Uh, in the review so uh, but it still did a fine job and you'll see when we do the comparison of the uh, the two cuts all right so uh, moving on we move on now to the vector engrave and I noticed that I ran this one way too hot the first one so here's the second one and again you're gonna see some anomalies in the engraving because of the belts um, but it did do uh, a good job there's a good gradient in here I did have to slow down the engraver to 5,000 millimeters per minute. And the reason for that is because I have a very old first edition Z1 laser. Mine is only capable of 5,000 millimeters per minute or maybe 6,000 millimeters per minute. The firmware is actually set to 5,000. So I had to slow it down to adjust for that. And again, over here, you know, when I show you the pictures a little later on, you're going to see that uh, there's some overscanning going on here, and that's because of, of the belt. What can I say? Uh, we all make mistakes, but still the, the actual product is what we're looking for. The results really speak for themselves. It, it did a good job on the vector engrave. After I replaced the belts, I've got a vector that I did that you're going to really uh, appreciate how well this thing engraved. And here I did my uh, regular eyeball test, um, which I did on the 24 watt. So I figured I would do it on this one for a comparison, even though uh, the speed on this one had to be a lot slower. I had to make a lot of adjustments with the uh, speed because of the 5,000 millimeter per minute limit. But um, yeah, that, I'll show you the results in just a minute. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is the eyeball test. And if you look down here, Jarvis is always usually the best. Now I was running this at 5,000 millimeters a minute with a maximum of 65% power. And at 100%, Jarvis looks really good down here. Let me see if I can zoom a little bit. You can almost see the details. Again, this is with the loose belt. So um, it still did a fine job comparable to a lot of other lasers. So Jarvis and Dither came out pretty nice. I'm going to have to run all these tests again, and you will see in the Battle of the 20 Watt Lasers coming up late January, you'll see much better results out of this. This is the only place that I had a problem, and again, it's probably because of the belts, but I just took off the lettering at the bottom so I can give you a good shot of this comparable to the A20 but I think once I get that belt issue fixed which is coming up soon uh, that'll resolve this issue and I think again in the battle of the 20 watts you're going to see a big difference in this so uh, this is the cut test and here are the anomalies I was telling you about you can see where it went a little further than it should have and one thing I will say is that the air assist uh, from Comgro is not as good as the uh, Acer. The Acer has the best air assist on the market, in my opinion, at that 60 liters per minute. The Comgro is 30 liters per minute, and you can see that it left a lot, uh, you know, it didn't do as clean a cut as the uh, 24 watt did. But still, um, the powers were super good. I'm going to show you the comparison next. So here is the Comgro with the poor belt adjustment. 
laid over the 8s or 24 watt and you see the difference these three the 8s are did not cut through these three it did not cut through these two it did not cut through this one this one this one this one and this one so there are all of the ones that it did not cut through so this did a better job on cutting even with the inferior air assist which is kind of surprising now, so I moved on and I did go ahead and uh, change the belts <laughs> on this unit. And here is the famous, or I should say infamous, uh, Dollar General, Dollar uh, 25 cutting board. I think it's eight millimeters, eight and a half millimeters, something like that. Uh, notoriously hard to cut. It did a fine job on that. So. You can see I started at 150 millimeters per minute and I moved up to, um, let's see, 150 and 100 power. And then I moved up to uh, 190 power. I don't know if that's a move up or a lateral move. And then down here, you can see it did not get through at the 200. Almost did, not all the way through though. And I'm looking for a clean cut. So I'm going to say 150 and 100, it's going to uh, cut through this with no problem and it did again did leave a lot of residue around the outside so not a perfectly clean cut and I did this in one pass so there's going to be burnt edges on it and here is the exact same graphic I did on after the uh, belt replacement and the, the last slide was also after the belt replacement and you can see it did exactly the same job as the Acer. Um, this little anomaly in the middle is just a wood grain right here. You can see a couple more of them through here. But it did at 5,000 millimeters per minute, 40% power, um, you know, it did cut through the veneer. On, so that's too much power. Um, you know, 40% is too much for vector engraving. Um, the second pass on this was 2,000 millimeters per minute at 30% uh, that was the line after fill so um, it is exact same settings exact same plywood as the 8 or 24 watt and it looks like we got the exact same results and if I zoom on this a little bit you'll see that the details are much better now with the new belts on so uh, I've corrected that problem this late in the, in the video all right so there you have it the my quick review, as quick as I could do, on the new ComGrow 20 watt quad diode laser. Um, it gets a big thumbs up from me. One, a couple of the things that were important for me to test, uh, and I'm so happy this is not a Blue Universe, uh, Guangdong Blue Universe laser module, because um, the air assist on the ones that they make leak from the top. So that was really important that I check that and I did check it and there is no air leaking from the top of the air assist. So it's all coming through the nozzle, unlike the Blue Universe type. And um, there's no problem with smoke and debris coming back up into the lens. And all of the engravings that I did, I just had the air assist on just slightly enough to keep the smoke and debris out of the lens. And on all of the cut tests, I had the air assist on full, keeping in mind that, you know, this is not, uh, this is a 30 liter per minute air assist that Comgro sells. Same exact one as the X-Tool, by the way. They're both exactly the same. I have both of them. Uh, they even look very similar. Uh, <laughs> very little difference between the two. So this one is the 30 liters per minute and uh, instead of the 60 liters per minute like the Acer and the um, Atom Stack. So those two are far superior air assists to anything on the market and right about where you need to be that, you know, that 60 liters per minute if you're doing a, a deep cut. So um, yeah, that's, that's uh, important, the air assist. But you can still get away with this air assist. You will have some cleanup afterward and typically what I do is I just put a little uh, cleaning vinegar onto a blue shop towel 
and I just wipe all of the smoke and debris. It comes right off. And you, you can just use water as well. Water works just as well. I use the cleaning vinegar mostly for the burnt edges. Uh, you know, it takes that off. It, it, uh, um, it stops the odor uh, and it just makes it so much nicer. So there's no smell. Uh, there's no black ash if you use the cleaning vinegar on the edges. So anyway, um, everything came out really, really well, better than I expected. The spot size I haven't actually checked yet. Uh, I do have my, um, my crack ruler over here somewhere. <laughs> yes, there's some, such a thing as a crack ruler. It's right here. <laughs> so I haven't actually checked the spot size as of yet. But I will be doing that. I wanted to get this video out pretty quickly because I have vacation this weekend and you're seeing an actual pre-recorded video right now that I did during the week, um, even though it's launching on Saturday. Uh, but uh, I've got this scheduled so that I can be away for my niece's graduation uh, at UA. But anyway, that's all beside the point. Um, I will be doing extensive testing on these in the Battle of the 20 Watts, which is coming up in late January. And by then, guess what? I'm even gonna have a 35 watt, 36 watt in the shop. So there is a new 36 watt uh, coming on the way. Now, of course, not, not many people are gonna be interested in more than 20 watts, in my opinion, anyway. I don't know if I would need more than than 20 watts with the 455 nanometer uh, beam, so uh, it's going. I think it's going to do too much burning once you get over 20. Even 20 does a, a, a too much burning, in my opinion. Uh, the 10 watts uh, are, are great. The 20 watts are okay <laughs> if you have a good air assist. So that's about it. Look for that battle of the 20 watts because we're going to be doing extensive testing. Same exact materials. Same exact um settings the same exact power same speed everything will be exactly the same using manufacturers suggested focus and that's important you know that we compare apples to apples and we're going to see the results over a vast amount of materials so that you can make a i i don't recommend lasers i'm not going to recommend modules i'm you know, I, I just don't recommend lasers. Yeah, I made an exception to the Acer because it is a really a quality machine. But I'm going to tell you that as far as budget goes, you're not going to beat. If you have a Z1 right now, uh, you're not going to beat this deal. The Z1 laser with the 20 watt module, the price is right. They have a special discount for my viewers. Link is going to be down below in the show more section. And don't forget about that laser raffle. <laughs> that link will be down there too. Click on show more and take a look at some of the links down there. Um, they're all for your benefit. So anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>